Good morning. Happy New Year. We come together to worship on this solemnity of Mary, the Holy Mother of God. Today is the Church's oldest celebration of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It is also designated as the World Day of Prayer for Peace. There can be no better way to start the new year than to honor our Blessed Mother and pray with her for peace in our world. As we pray together today at God's invitation, let us be mindful of how the Holy Mother of God cares for the Church and the world that her Son died to save. Bishop Ed Sharpenberg will be our celebrant. I am Bob Hotz. I will minister as lecturer along with Fran McDowell, Hank Roberts, and Ginny O'Brien. The Mass is being offered for special intentions of Rosemary and Carl Smyers, requested by the family. Maureen Barker, requested by Barbara Don Donnelly. St. Michael is the patron saint of our men and women in the armed services. I invite you to join me in praying the prayer of St. Michael for the safety and well-being of our troops. You can find the prayer on the inside back cover of your hymn book. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in power. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Our brothers and sisters, we, we know and we've been told that God wants us to be happy more than anything else. And if we really believe that, all we have to do is let the Lord into our hearts. So we ask his forgiveness for the times we've been hard to get, hard to reach, times when we've been more preoccupied by our own deals or attitudes that were judgments. Let them in the hands of God so God can be the center of our lives. Lord Jesus, Son of Mary, sent to save us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, Son of Mary, anointed of the Father, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, Son of Mary, conqueror of death, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Session 
of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, This is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. 
When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel, before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. I could begin by saying Merry Christmas, and that would probably be accurate, um, because it is the octave of Christmas, and as you know, uh, by this liturgical sort of um, invention that we have, we see Christmas as one day, a whole week. We prolong the celebration, so today is as much Christmas as December the 25th, and it's really also a part of the entire Christmas season. By the way, if you go to the Vatican, if you, or you go on the Vatican web, website and look at St. Peter's Square, you'll probably notice the creche will be up until February the 2nd, the Feast of the Purification that we sometimes call Candlemas Day. And uh, so there is a long tradition of seeing Christmas as a time of meditation and a, and a time of prayer, not only a time of, of rushing and getting things done and, and doing a lot of celebration, but a time of reflection. Uh, it kind of reflects the Advent spirit itself. In fact, I'm a, a great fan of seeing the entire liturgical year through Advent eyes. Why? Because, well, really, all of the characters, all of the themes of our faith are introduced during Advent. And the Christmas story itself, which we kind of hear in bits and pieces, um, there's wonderful accounts, you know, of that Christmas narrative in the Gospel of Matthew, and in the Gospel of Luke. And I strongly urge you, if you haven't done it already, to go back home and sometime throughout these days to go through and read the chapters, the first chapters of the book of the Gospel of St. Matthew and of St. Luke. Notice the contrasts. They're not really contradictory. They're contrasts. They, they have different focuses. Matthew focuses on the Magi, for example, and on the figure of St. Joseph. Luke focuses on the shepherds, the poor people, those that were sort of in the margins of society, and how Jesus first came, his parents came, first obvious to them, because the people that lived in palaces, the people that were full, the people that had everything, missed his presence. They didn't think they needed it. But those that were somehow or other with the outcasts and the margins of society were more receptive. They recognize their weakness, their brokenness. They recognize their need for a savior, for a messiah. Of course, Luke himself, we know by tradition, was a physician. So we would expect him to be sensitive, especially to those who were broken. Well, today also is uh, liturgically a day in which we celebrate the motherhood of Mary. And it's very appropriate because Mary is uh, the one who really took all these things in. Hers was a meditative spirit. As we're told, Mary treasured all these things in her heart, and there was an awful lot going on. You know, when we read all of the infancy narratives, we put them all together, we see that it isn't just about the fluffy little sheep and the shepherds. It isn't just about some of the things, the prettier parts, you know, the gold, the frankincense, and the fur, they smell very nice. But there was also a lot going on that was not very pleasant. Uh, there was a lot of uh, what we might call, I had a, a lady that wrote to me recently the Christmas card. She said, I hope we can get together soon so that we can celebrate the good and bad memories. And I thought that's very interesting. She has a very holistic view. She sees the total picture. There's good and bad. There's ups and downs in every life, in every relationship. And God knows if we look at the uh, infancy narratives, uh, there was a lot going on there that was not very good. We know, for example, King Herod was threatened. And when the wise men came that they were going to see Jesus, his own power was threatened by a little child. He wanted the child out of the way. This vulnerable little child became a threat to his security, to his power, to his influence. Imagine that. And so much so that he decided to resort to violence so that Joseph and Mary had to become refugees, literally, and get out of town so that uh, Jesus would not be killed. And we know the story of the Holy Innocents. We know Mary herself, when she went to temple, 
uh, for the presentation and met the figure of Simeon. We know that Simeon told Mary that your own heart will be pierced with a sword so that the thoughts of many hearts may be laid bare. What is that all about? Now, why are these sad things put into the scriptures? They're reminders to us of the real world that we live in. And we celebrate today, that's the word for it, we commemorate a world day of peace. Uh, Pope um, Paul VI, 50 years ago, decided it would be a good thing for us at this turn of the secular new year, you know, to, to, to pray for peace. Why do we do that? Well, what do we do in New Year's? New Year's, we tend to look back. We look back at 2016. And again, there are good memories and bad memories. And some of the bad memories I think we all have, and they'll leave politics out of this, by the way. <laughs> I'm sorry, if you're here to feel good as a Republican or feel good as a Democrat, I'm not going to do it for you. That's not the purpose of the do this. We're here to pray. And uh, obviously, our politics is, is a part of what we pray for, and God knows we need that prayer. But we look back at this year and we see there was a lot of violence. I suppose every year, you know, has its violence, but this year seems a particularly so. Pope Francis calls attention to that. He says it's like we're fighting a world war piecemeal in pieces, because there's about 50 places around the globe where there are, are wars going on, which there is terrible violence, some of which has persisted for many, many years, even decades. For example, like in Colombia, that battle, and in Nigeria, and Afghanistan, and Syria, and other places, too. We're very well aware of that. It's a lot of violence, a lot of pain. So it's good for us to look back and say, how do we break this vicious cycle? Because again, at the beginning of the new year, going into 2017, we, we have good hopes. and We hope that next year there will be less, that we can do something about it. But how is that going to happen? And that's why today is an opportunity for us to pray that it will happen. But like one of those beautiful songs says, let there be peace on earth, but let it begin with me. And it does have to begin with us. Sometimes when we think of justice and peace, we think of what are we going to do to get politicians to do things for us? You know, that's kind of natural. We do the same thing with the church too. We say, what are we going to do to get the Pope to do things and the bishops and the priests to do things and the nuns? When in reality we know, and, and I know you know this, that each and every one of us, that each and every one of us must be an instrument of God's peace. And God depends upon us. You know, when Mother Teresa was faced with all of the horrible, as the sight of being in the slums of Calcutta, when she first arrived there, you know, they said, they thought she was a dreamer, you know, an idealist. How is she going to change all this? All of the violence, all of the evil that, that she saw around her, you know, the prostitution, the, the uh, human trafficking, the, the drug abuse, uh, the poverty, and, and all of the, the effects of that. And she said, well, we, we can only do this one person at a time. So very realistic about that. Pope Francis, in his, um, he, he wrote a little eight-page sort of what we call in Italian a fervorino, a little encouraging letter. He'll probably write more about it. He chose as his theme this year, nonviolence as a style of politics. Now you have to understand, and I think you probably do, that when popes use the word politics, they use it in a much broader sense than we tend to do as Americans. They're not talking about partisan politics, although that's part of it. They're talking about what an Italian would, would, would go, would be called la politica, political situations. Political situations whereby, you know, they say politics is the art of the possible, right? Uh, politics, political situations that we're always in in human relationships. God knows there's politics and human relationships. Is it there? You have to, what words do we choose in our relationships, you know? Um, it, 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 sometimes we have to be diplomats, don't we? You know, so many times people are hurt because of some terrible thing somebody says, you know? Sometimes you can just say good morning to somebody and they'll say, what do you mean by that, you know? Because sometimes we take things the wrong way. I've had this happen to me where at the end of the day, somebody said to me, why were you so cranky today? And I said, what do you mean I was cranky? Well, you passed me by in the hall and you didn't say good morning. You know, I said, well, the last time I said good morning, you gave me a scout. No, I didn't say that. And <laughs> the reality is, is, the reality is, is I was preoccupied with my own thoughts. I was lost in my own little world. And I just passed this person by in the hall, and I'm glad she brought it to my attention. Because uh, yes, it, our actions do matter. So we have to be, you know, we have to be, uh, use diplomacy. But the Pope is talking about every level 
of human relationships, including our homes, maybe especially our homes, that unless there's peace in our homes, we're not going to have peace in our hearts, and we're not going to be able to change the world. This is all about change. We want the world to change. We want it to be a better place, don't we? And uh, let's say right at the outset, and Pope Francis reminds us, don't expect you're going to change the world all your own. God doesn't expect us to do that. Don't take that burden on yourself, that you're the only person that's going to do it. You know, obviously we need the Savior. Jesus is the one that's going to do it. But he needs us. He needs our eyes, our ears, our hands, our feet, and most of all, our hearts. And how much is my heart willing to be changed? Is there violence in my own heart? The way I think of others, the way sometimes I think of myself. Do I get so angry with myself and so frustrated that it holds me back from seeing myself as an image of God, whom God loves? That's where Pope Francis begins. As a matter of fact, his, his whole uh, approach is not, it does not really begin with the religious approach. The World Day for Peace that the popes have invited us to celebrate is really an invitation to the whole world people of all faiths, and even people of no faith, to say that this is a human thing for the good of humanity. We need a world where there is no violence, or certainly less than we have. We need a world at peace, because, as Pope Francis reminds us, when there's war going on, it's so destructive. There's so many resources that are put into breaking things, but we could be putting them into building things. Look at the problems that we have right now and, and the violence that comes from so many different forms where there is not ways in which there is not peace. From vulnerable people, for example, refugees and immigrants right now. You know, wh why are there so many refugees and immigrants? Well, for one reason, many of them are fleeing war-torn zones. That's why we have Syrian immigrants, you know, Muslim and Christian, because they're trying to get away from places where there's war going on. So you see, some of the things that seem to be the problem are actually the results of violence that are the course, the core of the problem. We see the same thing too in the southern border as well too. You know, it's really many of the people coming into our country through Mexico are coming from south of Mexico, from Central America. Why? Because they're fleeing gangs and they're fleeing violence in their own countries and political instability. So you see, sometimes we, if we think about it, we look back, the roots of the violence are much closer to home. Many times, if you look at the violence in personal lives, you see, we live in neighborhoods at times where we're not always sure what is happening in the home next door to us. Now, not that we are busy buddies. And every once in a while, you read in the papers some act of violence takes place, the police come in and, and somebody did something awful to somebody next door. You know, people say, oh, well, they were the nicest people. And they probably were. But nobody was aware of the fact that there was a lot of violence going on in that home until it became dangerous and then everybody knew. Uh, so many, many times, Pope cites particularly vulnerable classes of people. There are many others. But he cites certainly the infirm, certainly immigrants and refugees. And the unemployed as well, too. Many of our young people are unemployed. He says, don't resort to letting young people have to knock on doors to be able to find their lives worth living. It's so difficult. It's a real problem. The unemployment, that, that is also a source that leads to unrest and ultimately can lead to other forms of violence, sometimes in the form of drugs and other moves of desperation that people turn to because of human weakness and sin and because of the scourge of addiction. Some of those drugs are by the nature addicted themselves. If you or I were to take them, we might have the strongest will, but if you were to take some of those drugs, they're so strong that you could become an addict overnight, literally. Uh, thank God, you don't try it even once. But so many times we know how violence in cities is certainly exacerbated because of the, of the drug trade. And of course, it's a vicious cycle again too. Violence at times that happens uh, among the unborn and among the aging elderly as well, too. Uh, why does that happen? And again, so many times it's because connections are lost. A person it loses connection with a, with a larger family. A woman feels alone, abandoned, desperate, doesn't know what to do. 
Why is that happening? Well, in many cases, it's because a relationship broke up or a relationship that even shouldn't have been became a relationship of dependency because there was no other apparent source to find love, to find happiness, to find peace. So what is the Pope asking us to do then? I can sum it up this way. He takes a very, I would say, very Franciscan approach, a very holistic approach, not to see violence as something that we can separate that's out there, that's just in the political spectrum, that's just in the areas of where governments and negotiate as settlements or, or decide to declare war, but to see, to see violence as something that is a temptation and a threat in every one of our personal lives. And to ask ourselves, what can we do to let go of it? He says, this is not something negotiable. This isn't something just peripheral to the gospel. Now look at Jesus himself. He himself, throughout his life, was surrounded by violence. Throughout his life, was tempted to use it, was provoked, sometimes even by the religious leaders of his time, by the people that should have known better. He was asked to use violence at one point in fulfillment of the law, famously. Remember, the woman caught in the act of adultery? You know, and Jesus came up with a pretty good solution to that. Let the one who was without sin cast the first stone. Which is another way of saying, if you or I are tempted to go and point the finger at somebody else, for being the start. Oh, you started it, so I'm just hitting you back. You started it. Remember every time I point the finger out to somebody else, the other three fingers point right back to me. And you see, these are very challenging words, and sometimes it's easy to say, oh, the Pope is just being uh, too, too impractical. But he's saying, no, I'm, I'm suggesting this as a practical way of actually to do politics, to actually seek a style of nonviolence. Nonviolence is not passivity, by the way. Nonviolence is not toleration of evil. Jesus did not tolerate evil. God does not like evil. God is not, let, let the judgment in God's hands. God will take care of it. No, we, the, reason, the reason that we would employ nonviolence is precisely because we see evil where it is, and we don't want to perpetuate that cycle. You know, that was the problem in the Old Testament. Uh, eye for eye and tooth for tooth, as Gandhi famously said. If you do eye for eye and tooth for tooth, the whole world goes blind and loses its teeth. It has to stop. The cycle of violence has to stop somewhere. And where else but in your heart and mind? And you and I may say, well, that's too much to ask. But that's why Jesus came. He was the one that took the brunt of all of the world's wrongs. He was the one that took the punishment that we deserve so that we could have the reward that he deserved. He was the one that went up on that cross and absorbed all the evil in the world so that we ourselves would not have to be the victims of that, so that we ourselves could be saved. He's the one that gives us himself to rely on for the peace that we need in our hearts. So I go back to what I said at the very beginning before we celebrate these sacred mysteries and call to mind our sins. Is Jesus, the Prince of Peace, sitting on the throne of my heart? Is Jesus the center of my life? If Jesus, who is peace, is any place else but in my heart, then how can he possibly save me, let alone the world? And if Jesus is not at the center of my life, then who is? What idol is there? That idol needs to be dethroned, because that's the idol that is taking away my peace and taking away my happiness. So we come right back to where we started, turning to the Lord on this day, the first day of the new year, asking that this year we might be ready for a real change and that that change may begin in your heart and mind by inviting Jesus to be who he is, really is your Savior and mine, and by trusting him as our Prince of Peace, to be able to change the world for our saving. Amen. Please stand and join in our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived 
conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. God is always open to hear our prayers, so he likes to hear it from our lips. So although he knows our thoughts and our needs, let's voice our petitions in word. For an end to the violence perpetrated by harsh words, deadly weapons, or cold indifference, may our homes, our nation, and countries around the world become havens of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to see every human being as a child of God, regardless of race, language, or culture, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the strength to teach our children how to resolve differences nonviolently and respectfully, and the courage to model it in our own behavior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of all police and first responders who risk their lives daily to ensure our safety for fair and just policing that will promote peace and well-being in all our neighborhoods. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our parish that we may cultivate, welcome, extend hospitality, and encourage the participation of people of all cultures, ethnicities, and backgrounds. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For solidarity in our global human family that we may work together to protect those who are most vulnerable and most in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for those people we remember in this Mass. The special intentions of Rosemary and Carl Smyers and Maureen Barker. May, know, may they know the peace and comfort of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord and, and we pray for these members of our parish family who died on this day, January the 1st. Helen Shea, who died in 1933, Harold Hems, 1979, William Harrison, 19, Margaret Hogan, 1989, James Butler, 1991, Irene Delaney, 2003, Mary Keane, 2005, and Mary La Cerita, 2007. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Loving Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers for those that we've spoken with our lips and those that lie in our hearts too deep for words. We know that you will only our good and that you will answer them that they be for our good through Christ our Lord. Amen. Join us now in our presentation song, number 703, Let There Be Peace on Earth.
us, O you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and you become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed be you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual fruit. Blessed be God. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all that's holy church. O God, who in kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of the motherhood of the Blessed Ever Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and the powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of Taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, be your unworthy servant. My brother Howard, our Bishop Emeritus, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the life of have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Michaels. A few quick, quick announcements for you today. Uh, Men's Club selling those entertainment books and around the city books for the last <laughs> time today. Uh, they've been selling for the last couple of months, as you know. So uh, Mike is out in the gathering area if you'd like to purchase one from him. This is also the last weekend we'll be collecting items for the military. We'll be packing those up and bringing them to the VA hospital in Albany soon. Uh, the next two weekends, we'd be happy to take off your hands. Anything that you received for Christmas that doesn't fit you, isn't you, um, you don't need. And we have started our re-gifting program. Uh, we'll be delivering all of those items uh, after the next two weekends uh, to Concerns You and to the Rourke Center. There are two flyers for today's bulletin. We've gone to a new practice. Uh, we've been running off flyers for every single bulletin. We're going to discontinue doing that. Uh, we'll leave them on the baptismal font for you to pick up if you want to use them. Uh, this weekend we have the January calendar and also the rules from God for 2017 that I print every year for you. Uh, after today's Mass, they will be in the new rack in the gathering area along with leftover bulletins for you to pick up if you need them. If you haven't picked up your box set of 2017 envelopes, they're available for you in the parish hall. Uh, to stop by after Mass today and pick them up. They should be in alphabetical order. Uh, lastly, please join us for coffee and Danish with the bishop uh, in our parish hall immediately following Mass. Thank you so much for coming. Let's pray. Receive this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life. For we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God, the source and origin of all blessing, grant you grace, pour out his blessing in abundance, and keep you safe from harm throughout the year. Amen. Amen. May he give you integrity in the faith, endurance in hope, and perseverance in charity, with holy patience to the end. Amen. May he order your days and your deeds in his peace, grant your prayers in this and in every place, and lead you happily to eternal life. Amen. 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 May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join us in our recessional song number 498, Hail Holy Queen. Mm -hmm. 